Chapter 20 Oil Currency Trading for the Inn A quart of wheat for denarius, and three quarts of barley for denarius, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Revelation 6 and 6 Oil currency is the exchange rate for the end of time. The end times were put into motion over a century ago when oil became a major means of influencing the world's currency. For prior to that, the major means of influencing the world's currency was through war, and now the world powers have two means of influencing the world's economy. And what is the world's major currency? It is still the U.S. dollar, which accounts for two-thirds of all of the world's exchange reserves. More than 80% of all foreign exchange transactions and over 50% of all world imports are exchanged in U.S. dollars. Because of the world exchange currency in U.S. dollars, our government and nation can essentially produce paper currency and receive imports at almost no cost. Our U.S. dollar has little equitable financial backing, except for the fact that it is the currency by which foreign trade is conducted. This is reflected in the fact that the value of our imports greatly exceeds the value of our exports. In fact, just last year, the economic value of our imports was worth more than 50% of our export value. The major objective of bringing the euro, E for in times, into the market was to turn the euro into reserve currency in order to compete against the US dollar and a major means of allowing other countries to compete against the U.S. dollar was the ability for them to convert the exchange currency of oil from U.S. dollars to euros. By forcing oil currency into euros, the U.S., the number one importer of oil, would be forced to exchange U.S. dollars into euros, and due to the loss of exchange value, this would cause a domino effect on the trade value of the U.S. dollar. Conservative estimates suggest that a conversion to euros would decrease the dollar value by more than 40%. Ultimately, this would lead to a major crash of the U.S. property and stock markets, thus spiraling the U.S. into a major depression. And in fact, in November of 2000, Saddam Hussein decided to attack the U.S. economy in retaliation for Desert Storm and subsequent trade embargoes by converting Iraq's oil exchange into euros. This caused a significant decrease in the US dollar exchange rate, and OPEC was threatening to follow in suit. Because we could not control a regime like Iraq economically, our government decided to use alternative means to control their oil currency, military force. Presently, Iran has also converted its oil exchange to the euro to show support from the longer horn, Iran, to the shorter horn, Iraq. And historically, this relationship will go down in infamy. Now the two horns were long, but one was longer than the other, with the longer one coming up last, Daniel 8 and 3. Epsilon is the fifth letter of the Greek alphabet. And interestingly, in mathematics, it means a small quantity of anything, i.e., the cost is only epsilon. And the euro was introduced into the market because the U.S. was purchasing oil for just an epsilon amount. And epsilon is also utilized in economics as a measurement called elasticity. Elasticity measures how much the demand of a product changes as its price changes. For example, oil economically has a low elasticity because the economy requires oil regardless of its price. And due to oil's low elasticity, the oil industry can increase the price of oil or increase the profit margin at will because the public always has a high demand for its product. And in fact, in 2005, the U.S. oil industry had revenues in excess of $1.6 trillion, and over 80% of the revenue was accounted for by the major oil companies, or big oil. Oil currency is the reason for military and economic force. For those of you who doubt the effect that oil has on the world, 
and what seductive powers it has over our leaders. Here is a brief history lesson. Oil is required for almost every aspect of our economic and military power. It is required for transportation, heating, agriculture, medications, machinery, and synthetic manufacturing. Moreover, oil use has skyrocketed over the past century because of gas guzzling automobiles, neglect of public transportation, dispersed suburban housing patterns, and the excessive consumption of products. At present, the world is consuming 80 million barrels of oil daily. The U.S. is presently the number one consumer and importer of oil at a consumption rate of about 20 million barrels daily. Each U.S. citizen consumes about one barrel of oil every two weeks. Due to the poverty of the Middle East region, foreign oil has always been much cheaper to produce and transport than domestic oil thus giving the oil companies a huge profit margin and the incentive to obtain oil overseas rather than domestically. The U.S. government has tried in the past to control oil supplies independently, but due to the opposition of the private sector, it has never been able to do so. Because of that, the government is largely controlled by the interests of the private oil companies, most notably the Seven Sisters. Exxon, Mobil, Chevron, Texaco, Gulf Oil, British Petroleum, and Shell. Of principal concern to these companies is maintaining the security and stability of the Middle Eastern region. As we know, this has often entailed using covert and blatantly militaristic schemes to ensure control of certain countries, namely Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan and Kuwait. And now that the U.S. has military control of Iraq and Afghanistan, we now have control of 75% of the world oil reserves, i.e. 100,000 barrels daily from the Caspian reserves via the Trans-Afghanistan pipeline and 250 billion barrels of Iraqi oil. Clearly, the U.S. hopes to control world oil trade and force opposing nations to purchase oil in U.S. dollars rather than euros, and thus force nations to hold hundreds of billions of U.S. dollars in reserve for future transactions.